when it's time to leave it's not yeah. you can leave run run <laughs> don't you're not getting a death save yeah there's <laughs> this is not 5e this is 1e i will kill you very quickly <laughs> and giants do and they were fighting frost giants so what is it four to 24 points of damage so it was like <laughs> uh, let's see what's your ac oh my ac is eight they can hit you with a three <laughs> Run! <laughs> Most unlike the villains, spirits of pain and more power. There's a talk he doesn't know how. Does a bottle does it anyhow? In the land of the street, the gore. And I showed him so much more. Welcome back to Cerebrivore. I'm your host, Jason, the Nerds RPG Variety Cast. I have two esteemed guests today. I have, I'm, I'm just going to go in the order I have them on my screen here. I have Vic Dorso, the man behind DaveCon in Minneapolis. How are you doing, Vic? I'm doing just fine. Excellent. And I have MW of the Worlds of MW Lewis podcast. How are you doing today, MW? Oh, I'm very good. Excellent. Excellent. So these gentlemen have been playing AD and D since before some of our AD and D and D and D since before some of our listeners were born from from way back in the day. And we were talking, and and there are some lessons from back when we played in the eighties that seem to be lost. And and so maybe we, we thought about maybe some of those changes in play styles. And that's not to say there aren't great games today. There are great games today, and they're great players today. But there were things we did back in the day the the common advice today is it can't work and we've seen it work so we thought maybe we we would share some of those experiences um so i i guess let's launch into the you, you know the big topic here the idea of having an evil character in the party you know can, everybody says it can't work vic it's well, impossible. we should let Vic go first on that if we're talking about evil characters. That's right. The Scourge of the North. <laughs> Thanks, MW. I, I, I guess I can feel how you feel about me now. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, I have routinely in my group a uh, person who plays evil characters. It's not a problem. It's um, my rule is don't to all my players. The only person that needs to know that your character is evil is moi, myself, and you, the person who's playing the character. Now, if somebody lets off a spell like a detect evil spell and they just happen to put it on you, well, <laughs> you got to deal with the consequences. If, we, if it gets into combat, it gets into combat. But generally, I don't have a problem with it unless that person that's evil starts killing players in the group. And usually the the players that player himself has a mission i'm finding an artifact or i'm doing something or i'm trying to convert people to my religion or something like that it never affects the play so much besides in minor aspects than other things i mean he he will he will he will send people to heaven or send people back to their maker <laughs> That's one of his famous lines. I will send you back for redemption. <laughs> so, you know, it's whatever. But uh, MW, it's up to you now. What well, you, you I think? like what you're saying because I do think in in the old days, back in the 80s, when a lot of us were first starting to get into the game, I'm, I'm, I might be a little younger than you, Vic. I'm not making a judgment here, but <laughs> yeah, I'm a couple years younger. You might have started in the late 70s, so I started in the early 80s. Yeah, so all right. So uh, you, you could play a mixed party without a problem. And um, I think the reason why was there were actually examples in the literature of, of these these kinds of groupings of, of heroes. And I'll, I'll, one of my favorite examples of this is the Dragonlance series, where uh, the twins, you had uh, you know, Caramon and, and Raceland the wizard, who Raceland was borderline evil or was evil in many of the books. And but he still was loyal to his companions and he still often would help them because helping them 
would help him achieve his goal, which is exactly what you just said. There's, there's got to be a reason for the evil character to be in the party, or really there doesn't actually have to be a reason. But if the characters themselves can't wrap their mind around it, then there does have to be a reason. But um, one of the benefits, if you had the mixed uh, alignment party, back in the 80s is if you played the alignment languages and you had a group of characters entering a situation and the evil character could communicate with evil monsters which could be benefit the whole party so the game mechanic uh doesn't necessarily preclude putting the evil alignment character uh in the group now with all that being said though vic i don't know if you'd agree if you played a lot of the preset modules from tsr which i love i've expressed my love for them on my podcast and jason's podcast and i've called into other podcasts that becomes a little more difficult because it does there are they don't always offer the opportunity for that evil character to really have like a reason to be there so that's where you need a skilled player and a skilled dm to make it work or like I said, if you're 13 years old you, and you just don't care, like you don't care if it makes sense. And that's a lot of like when I started playing, we didn't care if these things made sense. I'm going to be the black robe wizard and I'm evil and I'm going to do this module. And if someone else said, well, why would you do the module? I don't know. It's just what we're doing. Yeah, we're just here to have fun. That, that was often our reason to play. We didn't need these cohesive stories. But I find in the modern game, people want to have a little more cohesion. So I, I see what you're doing, Vic. You have to be, you know, you have to work with the players and make sure it does work. Because a lot of people just don't get together and say, oh, I don't really care. I'll play the evil character. Whatever. I'm just here to have and fun. I, well, see, here's another rule I have in my game, too, is that. I have the assassin. If you're an assassin, you cannot reveal your what you are. You can't reveal your class. You may say you're a cleric, you're saying so whatever else. You can be a fighter, or whatever. But on the, you know, anything you do, play it to the hilt while you're with the group. It, okay, you're an evil assassin playing a fighter in my group. Fine by me. I have no problem with this whatsoever. But once you start doing player on player nastiness, if you're discovered, right, oh, the gloves come off. You know, if they decide to kill you, that's it. It's done. Right. You know what I mean? And then it's, you're going to role play that out too to, to right. its logical conclusion. Exactly. Right. And, and an evil player, you know, like I said, I mean, they can have goals. They don't want to hurt the group, but they can have those goals that parallel the group's goals. You know what right. I'm saying? It's, it's, I'm looking for this artifact. Well, the group is just going in the same direction as that evil character. So he's looking for that artifact. If that artifact pops up, he's going to make the biggest play he can. He's going to give all his gold. He's going to do whatever. The last resort is he's going to turn on the group itself and kill somebody and try to get away with it so you know that's right and uh i think so what i've done is i'm a little less generous than you in the modern game i do try to keep the evil characters out of mixed i, I try not to mix the parties that way because i find unless i'm with real experienced players uh and and in my games i run right now i have one group that's very experienced and the other group that was learning 1e when we started the game um now i'd say they're very experienced um because it's two years later uh, i i just threw it out i said no one's going to be evil because it's just you get you know it, the, i think the modern player the player that grew up with with 5e just can't i just think they overplay it just like uh, some of them overplayed the thief or the assassin character. I actually don't even allow assassins unless I, I know the character person playing the character can do it without, you know, you don't want to ruin the game for everybody. Oh, of course. Yeah. Well, 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 that's the other problem character class, right? The paladin. They're the other ones that can get, be, be a thorn in people's side. Although I think the other part with the paladin, a lot of people don't get, which I know MW does because we've done it in the game, is you know, the paladins detect evil isn't just a spidey sense. That That's an active thing they need to do that's a fairly rude thing to do. So you're, you're not generally going to be going around detecting evil on your party member, <laughs> on, on other people on your party, right? Yeah. The same thing, get, cast and detect alignment on people on your party, right? But Well, like I said, what, like I said before we started uh, talking here, is I think the assassin, the, the biggest pain in the butt I can possibly have in my group because i've got druids 
rangers, uh, somebody evil in the group usually uh, sees <laughs> an assassin just or a paladin just as it, it, it's such a small cog that will it's a cog that will just derail a whole group. The same with a bard, I think, but I don't play bards. What's one character class that I've completely thrown out because it's optional? But that that paladin is a is a bad cog in, in the machinery, and yeah. it just it, it, it my in my group, I I don't know what it is. It just nobody can play it right. Number one, number two is I got that was these little characters in there and. And then, you know, and then, you know, we don't ever go on these quests or if we do a go on a quest and there's, you know, some unsavory thing going on, like uh, slavery or something else, you know, the, the paladin always wants to charge into these nightmares. And I got other players going, no, we're going to go to the left. We're going to go to the right. We're not going directly ahead. We're not heading yeah. head on into this thing. <laughs> well, you know? it's. It's an interesting thing because just like the uh, assassin and an evil char alignment character doesn't often fit into the preset modules, the paladin mm -hmm. often doesn't either. Yeah, it's hard to explain why a paladin would do a lot of the uh, those really great classic TSR modules. They're they're really a lot of them aren't really like you just said. They're not really quest oriented or quest mm -hmm. based. They're more let's go get wealthy let's go mm -hmm. find that lost treasure it's not i mean in that you know in a way that is what uh paladin i mean if you had a holy knight of of the middle ages they went east really to get rich they didn't really care about the holy land but um some of them made it but but in the game the paladin's supposed to be like this holy avenger guy and it, oh yeah let, let me uh let's go dungeon delve a little bit so i could pick up some coin and then they have to get rid of it all anyway after the end mm -hmm. of the adventure so it, it's not a great character class uh, and it has to be played well i've had my monday night game the the first uh grouping that started that game the one guy played the paladin okay he but but it was starting to get a little annoying because he, he started to act like he was the morality cop and if people were drinking too much he'd want to lecture them and I was just kind of like, you know, I don't, I don't think it, even in real life, a holy knight, I, he probably drank as much as anyone else, you know, stop that. They're not like, um, you're not, they're not Mormons and no offense to Mormons, but it's not, that's not what you're playing here. You're, you're playing a regular person who fights and kills and he's a tough guy. He just happens to be holy and, and generally do good things. Right. And, and, and we're at Paladins. Now let's talk about monks in the same mm -hmm. bunch thing here because there's the lawful good monk there's the lawful neutral monk and then there's the lawful evil monk that's right now, i got a lawful neutral monk in my party that that, <laughs> that, that he has a lot of fun with the party sometimes it's it's, it's just it's just a, oh we should give this treasure away and he'll just give the treasure away and the party's looking at him like, like what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> we can use that but this person's homeless and you know we need to we need to bring them up and it's like oh my god he drives the players batty and stuff but yeah the, the lawful monks too can really you know it's the alignment that just really throws people off mm -hmm. and it's how it's how it's played you know what i'm saying I yeah mean, and i think what happens is i think when i think when we read these rules back when we we're you know younger we're like yeah these are great little guidelines i'm generally supposed to be lawful good and then you just played everybody pretty pretty much played neutral but you had benefits i can i have the lawful good alignment language i have it but today it's more like these aren't really guidelines that are kind of guide you morally it's sort of like this is my character my care i am lawful good therefore i'm always lawful good i'm I won't even spit on the sidewalk. That's how freaking lawful good I am. Oh yeah. And it, it's like no one's no one's that lawful good. Like well, that's so unrealistic. <laughs> right. Well, we mentioned well, Vic talks about different classes like druids, right? Well, they're neutral, true neutral. Yeah, you know, true neutral. Well, your two alignments that are most misunderstood. You, well, we lawful good's pretty misunderstood. It, it that's a it's difficult for people, but true neutral and chaotic neutral. But, but let's talk about true neutral for a minute and, and the idea of druids being, you, you know, whether they're eco terrorists or this or that, which, which isn't a, a, a true neutral thing. But, but I mean, you can't. That's why Palladium Games threw new, true neutral out of their alignment system because Kevin Symbiota said, 
You can't be neutral. It doesn't make any sense. Humans are selfish. They're good. They're evil. Or they're selfish, right? They're. they're well, um, well, Jason, that's another big misconception of the neutral character. Some yeah. people believe neutral means you're selfish. You're mm -hmm. the ultimate self-centered. And that they're not reading. They're clearly not right. reading what's written in the actual player's handbook. Because if mm -hmm. you read what's in the player's handbook, it doesn't say anything about being selfish. It means you feel the two forces of good and evil need to be balanced out. Right. That's what it means to be a true neutral. It doesn't mean every single one of those character uh, alignments could be you could personally be selfish. Correct. Uh, you could be selfish and be lawful good. I wouldn't penalize you if you were selfish. It doesn't say you're not personally selfish. <laughs> well, well, just, yeah, the paladin can still it, lust after it's... that magic item, right? They can still want that. The, yeah. you know they don't have a holy avenger yet but that plus three sword looks awful nice you know well, yeah and as That's... long as it benefits their god they're gonna be mm -hmm. as selfish as they want to be so, oh well i'm gonna take this and you know this will help me and my god i'm uh, you know yeah. obtain our goals you know i mean that's yeah. selfish so, right there you know in fact honestly what i try to do is encourage my players to be a little more selfish because that's another aspect of the game which we i don't want to change the topic we can get to it later but i mm -hmm. notice that when it comes to treasure division, uh, man, boy, we are, I don't know, maybe it's society in general, but it's very becoming very communist. It's always, mm -hmm. oh yeah, let's just even, even like the highest level fighter, once you play long enough, you get you get six, seventh level fighters part partying around with third levels. And they're like, oh yeah, equal share, equal share. And it's like, man, but you're never gonna level up if you keep equal sharing with the third level. And, and I'm like, why, you know, why is it always got to be equal share? I, I remember we'd fight over the booty back in, oh, in, in I the think day. I guess we got a little different dynamic. It's, um, okay, you're a first level character. You don't need that Dragon Slayer sword. That goes, that it, it is by hierarchy in my my group. It's uh, yeah. your seventh level. You get first dibs on whatever's in the pile. And if somebody takes a Dragon Slayer sword and they're holding a plus one sword, they toss the plus one sword back into the kitty. And then now somebody down at the first level can take that plus one sword and go, hey, I got this neat little plus one sword. Well, congratulations. You know? Well, that is very, <laughs> that's the old school way to play. I, I congratulate your group because I have to encourage my group groups to argue i'm like what the hell is all this even distribution half you guys didn't even do anything well, and, uh, well let's talk about distribution go back to neutral just a little bit here because you know my girlfriend plays a druid all the time and in the rules it says the druid only keeps so much cash around but well, one of my things she does is she goes into the marketplace inside of whatever town we're in and if she's got five thousand gold pieces she blows it on every animal that's that's been in a cage and she just releases them all back to the wild so <laughs> it's like okay you spent x number of gold pieces so releasing stuff back to the wild there you go <laughs> which is fine i mean that's that's what a druid would do you know i mean it's it's sort of you know but i always tend to see a druid as leaning towards good and i think of a ranger as like a druid's henchman because the rangers will be like oh well oh you know i'm gonna go out and kill those giants because they've been destroying stuff because the druid said so you know and it's like a little and if you read inside um where is that? I don't remember which book it is. But well, that's an interesting book, dynamic, too, because both those character classes are more of the solitary types as well. Right. Well, right. I think it's in the Splat book, the D&D Splat book, the brown one. Uh, and it says in there that, that druids have these circles or concave, conclaves or whatever it is, and they go to these and select rangers get invited to these conclaves so that they're in these yeah, you know that. when they have these summer solstice celebrations or whatever well that sort of cemented in my mind that druids and rangers are sort of mashed together a little mm -hmm. bit there and, and if something's really bad happening a druid will reach out to the rangers and the rangers will come in and solve the issue yeah you know what i mean right. And, and the well, other thing, back to your, your monks, I, <coughs> I think that is a, a cool character class that doesn't get played enough. I think uh, uh, there's a lot of people that don't ever want to play that monk because they want the cool weapons or they want the cool armor. But it, I, I like that character class. I think it's a really cool one, especially at well, higher levels. Well, that's the problem with well, the monk, right? It's a slow starter. It, yeah, it's it's, it's slow getting starter. to the high levels is hard. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's really slow. It's sort of like, it's slow. I think of it as even slower than the magic user. You know, magic user gets one spell at first level, but you know, 
after a while, I think the magic user gets more powerful than, than even the monk can get. But once a monk gets past, I think it's sixth or seventh level, then a monk turns into a, something that, oh boy, you got yeah. some power going on here. You yeah. Know? That, that's the other thing I try to do. Well, I don't know. Uh, we're all over the place, Jason. So you moderate us. No, but well, I wonder, <laughs> Vic, when you played back in the day, the old days, uh, did you guys use those uh, uh, level titles a lot? Was that an important function no, of the game? That was, uh, that, we, it, we did. And that was always something we thought was pretty cool. Like, you know, I'm this level. This is my title. It's kind of like I'm in a guild and I'm working my way up through this guild of fighters. And I find today people, you know, that's kind of really dropped off like but maybe maybe we were unique in that using that right well the only guild problem we had was the thieves when the thieves went into a major town if they were part of the guild you know what i mean it, it was it was okay now we're going to have some issues and i usually pulled some stuff like oh okay well a thief is going to target of course of course thieves are going to target a npc group or a pc group coming through town because hey they're loaded with money that's going to be easy pickings, especially if they're in the bar drinking, you know what I mean? Right. Whatever. And so I always roll that when they, when they roll into town, I'm always rolling that to say, Oh, and then I'll roll which characters, you know, sometimes it's nobody gets picked on, but usually it's two or three characters in my play that they're in town. I have, I'll roll a random number on D12 for which, what type of thief comes after him. Oh, it's yeah. a six level thief. The six level thief is going to go pick the pocket of so and so. I do the same <laughs> thing, actually, because that's, that's something I find missing from a lot of the modern games, too, is what is good for the goose is good for the gander. And it's like the game has become so player centric, I think, especially with the uh, 5e and other versions, that the, the DM really holds back and he creates a town and the town's there for the players to play in, but it's not, you know, he doesn't, it doesn't interact back with them. So the thieves doing all the robbing and the thieving, but no one else ever gets robbed. No one else in the party ever gets robbed. It's like, how's that? What is your thief? The only thief working when you're in town (laughs) or the assassin in the group doesn't go and do a side job. You know what I mean? He's actually supposed to do a job in that town. That's why he's with the party. So he breaks off in the middle of the night and he goes, does an assassination. The town goes in an uproar or whatever. It's just like, okay, here we go. You know, the plot. Maybe the party needs to get chased. Maybe, hey, this guy showed up in town and now our cleric's dead. Now, here's a funny one. I had it where an assassin went and killed somebody that was in the group, right? Then the party was hired to find the assassin. The assassin was part of the group. So it was, it was a complete circle, yeah. you know, for a while there. They're just trying right. to go, who did it? Who did it? We got clues. We don't, it, they didn't even realize a killer was in their midst, you know? <laughs> so, so, Jason, were you on the Greyhawk sessions a couple weeks ago? Did you rejoin when we had uh, a couple of the party members did get robbed in, in um, uh, Salt Marsh? They were in, we were running Salt Marsh, you won, mm-hmm. which didn't end well. Right. Uh, for the party and yeah. uh, uh i did have a couple there was a couple uh of ro- robberies that took place out on the street at night and the, and the players were loving it like brian and all these guys in that game they're not used to that mechanic actually coming back and biting them and they kind of at first they were kind of like oh my god this place is dangerous what why are there so many thieves around here and i'm like you have a thief in your group. <laughs> you have a thief in your group, and you want to know why there's so many thieves around here. <laughs> I had the same thing happen where one of my players got wandered in a alley and got backstabbed by a thief. The party, you know, two of the party members chased the thief, and the thief got away. They were fit to be tied. It was just like it was like, oh, I love this dynamic. They're just they're just like, yeah. oh god, yeah. I, I'm glad you brought that back, uh, MW. What, so the I, I think I joined probably the session after that because they were actively looking for the guy. But remember when right, we started that guy. game, when we yeah. started that Friday night AD and D game, you you had you know ro- come into the rooms and rob us. So first level party in the town <laughs> with money. So what's going to happen? Local thieves are going to target them, right? That's and right. I, that's right. I Paladin's the one that got robbed at the time, right? Because I had a Paladin when we first joined. When that's right. Volstag, that your character Volstag yeah. got yeah, robbed. He was, kind of, he was retowned. He was, you know, big butterball. But anyway, he, he got robbed, and which is fine. I was okay with that. But but right after that happened, some of the other players that weren't used to AD&D 
were or, or I don't know what game. I don't know what game. Some of them. Well, they do play a one e, but a lot of they DMs don't, don't yeah. bring this mechanic to to because bear they, on the players. Yeah, because they were at that right after that robbery, they were scared to hire anybody. Like we we're looking for hiring, they wouldn't don't want to hire any hirelings. They didn't want to trust yeah. anybody. They so Vic, wanna... it became some super paranoia now. Yeah. Now they were like, <laughs> oh, I've, I everybody... have that all the time in my game. <laughs> my, my players look at me like. like Look at his face. He's planning something. You know he's got something in the thing. No, he got and I'm trying to hold back a grin like nobody's business, and I'm just like. <laughs> well, yeah, I know that that is funny, but at some point you do have to have them. Like you have to be able to buy something to eat and not worry that the guy's going to poison you. So I had to lecture them. Do you remember, Jason? Yeah. We had the oh, lecture. Yeah. I said, "Listen." You guys understand that the world you live in, sometimes you get robbed and sometimes you won't get robbed. Most of the times you probably won't get robbed. Like we all accept that in the world. But I said, what, just because you get robbed once or twice, you, you know, now you can't think even the serving girl is is Tiamat, you know, in disguise. <laughs> like it's just roll with the punches here. And uh, the world works out just like your thief will rob people some of the times. And some of the times he won't rob people. <laughs> Right. I, I totally agree with that. It's just, yeah. it's just, you know, playing that evil character inside the group. I mean, they're going to have other agendas. And I think, I think that a dungeon master, if he's playing the game well, or he's, he's got a control of his group, he can say, Hey, you could cut loose a little bit. I had one of my youngest players. I was like, is he the youngest? He's the youngest player. And most people, none of the group knew about it. He sent me a note. And I'm like, oh, okay, how old about the note? He's in a cave alone, away from the group. And I say, what are you going to do? And he's, he, he sends me a note. And he says, can I go look in the other sections of the caves and look for money and gold? I said, I sent him a note back. I said, sure, I don't care what you do. Well, he ripped off the party for $22,000 worth of stuff. <laughs> 22,000 gold pieces worth of gems and, yeah. and, and magic. And he, and, they never knew about it ever. I mean, it went through the whole arc and their character finally died. But when they finally died, they, they saw how much money and stuff he had on him. And it's just like, he must have been saving all his treasure. No, he wasn't. <laughs> None of them were like, wait a minute, didn't that used to be mine? <laughs> he was robbing them blind every time they bought a treasure. He was like, he's like, I'm going to go scoot over to this room and go check out this part of the camera well that you know that's a great point too because that's another part of the game i think ruins it for someone who's clever enough to play the character so, so sometimes the party gets really mad and they're really like oh i don't like he skimmed the thief who just risked his life to open the chest he skimmed like no way we're gonna gut him now and, and i <laughs> I'm like, first of all, you don't know he skimmed, all right? First of all. Mm -hmm. Second of all, what do you think? He, he's a thief. I'm like, what's your problem here, people? <laughs> well, I know. It's a, I mean, when he did it, I was just, I was shocked because he's one of my youngest players. And I'm just looking at him going, okay, <laughs> whatever you want to do. I sent him a note. I said, I said this is what you find, you know, because I rolled it right there really quick. And I, I, I do. I like that. I don't know how you feel about that, Jason, but I like that opportunity for some intraparty tension that doesn't ruin the game, though. I don't like right. the, the intraparty tension that is just ruining the game. I think we've all agreed we don't like it, right, Vic? You don't want that evil character just ruining the game. No, but you know what? I also want, I want more of our players send me notes because guess yeah. what? Your, your thoughts don't need to go to everybody else in the party and get, ruin your plans because sometimes players have plans that are far better than you know the leaders of the group they, I mean, they just do sometimes they you know sometimes i get a note and go okay go and i'll say go for it i'll send it back to the thing and that player will just go off and do his thing and i'll be like okay um because we play at a game center and i said i say all right let's take a break and that person will stay there because he knows he's got to stay there and I'll, I'll adjudicate and roll that stuff what's going on and it's just like okay here's what happens on your end and the rest of these players are off you know getting a drink or whatever and getting they come back and there. they have no idea yeah. what just went down which is a well, good thing yeah, you know? yeah and hey. that's one um, that's one nice thing with playing online there aren't very many nice things about playing online but that Not is many. one of them because once you're online, it is so much easier to pass notes with nobody knowing about it because they never even 
they don't see that piece of paper going back and forth when you're messaging back and forth to each other, right? We, which yeah. I've done that with MW before during our game. Yep. You know, we're, when and somebody's off doing something on their own, you can do that and nobody knows it. So yes. that's, you know, very nice. Well, you can especially do it inside, like you're in the city setting. That's, yes. that's very easy mm-hmm. to get that stuff out in the country, you know, because yes. I run a very long wilderness hex crawl it's sort of harder to do that stuff except for when they get into like a lair of someplace and it's just like oh i'm gonna break off over here these two characters go wandering off and it's like oh okay i know what you guys are doing i know what you guys are doing and you know they break off and it's a two-party system i mean if someone dies someone dies (laughs) you know it's just i have no remorse when it comes to death it's just like oh well all right 24 points of damage i'm dead I'm dead, dead. Yeah, well, that's what happens, you know. It's, it shouldn't have know. wandered off. <laughs> well, and that's the no. thing too. Is it? Is it? Uh, how do I say this? I'm not fond of running modules per se, and I've got a hundred of them. The biggest problem I find without running a module is, is that they're so. Uh, it feels like you're getting railroaded down them. You have to have a one through third level characters. You can only play four or five of them. Max, maximum addition of all the le- levels is, is 24, and you guys can get through this thing. And I'm just like, well, what if some powerful party with eighth level fighters come, walks up on this stuff? You think they're just going to walk away? Well, heck no. They're going to walk in there and slaughter everything. <laughs> If they get if they get some quick treasure, eh, what do they care? You know what I mean? Right. It's just, you know, so I, I mean that's why I run my wilderness campaign as a completely random thing. Last week they ran into, uh, or actually not last week, last month they ran into some fire giants, and they TPK the group except for two or three of them, and they only got away because they had potions of polymorph were able to polymorph or they had rings of some type that, that they just scattered because the rest of them are standing there going ah and they all died you know and then all their treasure got taken by the fire giants and of course the druid and a couple others come back and they take some samples of their bodies and bring them back and reincarnate right. them or bring right. them back <laughs> I, was, I was like and now they're you know fifth level characters and they're completely buck naked inside of town with nothing but a loincloth and a, and a butter knife you know to try to make themselves back into these ultra fine characters that they were you know <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah let's um let, let me ask you this is as, as we kind of transition on the you know, towards the close of the show, we're not ready to, to cut anything off yet, but let's talk about the outside the game mechanics, as far as player mechanics, what, what do you guys do to MW talked about this a little bit with where he had to stop and and almost lecture, you know, the party on, listen, this is the kind of game we're in, but what what do you do to prep your players or, or the, like the player to player dynamic, not in the game, but as far as, Oh, you, you know, your assassin just killed your character, just killed my character, you know, from having those fights at the table. Or, I mean, I realize now we're typically playing with adults, so it's a little bit easier. But, but you know, to, to have players that maybe are new to this kind of play, what, what do we do to get people so they're, you, you transition them into it, I guess? Okay. If that makes sense. Uh, my thing is, is that I don't let player on player fighting so much unless it's an egregious offense mm-hmm. um the, the so-and-so detects this person's evil and they start giving questions and and i let them do the bantering back and forth and i'll just adjudicate like like oh he's giving good questions he's giving good answers to these questions and and he's not trying to he's never you know made the made the party you know what I mean? It, it, it hasn't affected the party in the mainstay. Uh, it's very, I would say, I think I've only had it once in three years that I've had a player versus player fight. And, oh no, twice. It was twice, I'm sorry. Uh, one of the times I said it was a no weapons fight. They just, they were just fisticuffs. So I was like, all right, I'll just, this is going to be simple uh, because one player had an 18 something strength. The other one had like a 14. <laughs> I'm going to adjudicate this one really fast. And we got it done. But the other one was a player on player fight, but it's very rare. 
and mainly they get through it fast enough that I can just keep going on with stuff. And I don't worry about that for the, for so much as the, the player versus player stuff. So have you lost players over these kind of things at all? Or I lose more players for death of characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, yeah, I, that's, one, I agree. With, yeah, that's what people don't like their characters dying. I had a guy, and, and this is a scenario. I, I, we have this village called Minkusville. It's sort of our jumping off point. It's in the barrier peaks of Greyhawk. And this character uh, was a magic user. The village got attacked by trolls. The only person who was holding a wand of fire was a person that got killed and I, I i and and he was really mad at me that that day because he had written a three-page backstory to his character and i'm just like you wrote a three-page backstory to your character and yet you're sitting there looking at a troll in the face and you're holding a wand of fire and you didn't do what you needed to do right why is it my fault that that your character died when you're holding all the weapons you ever could possibly need to kill that thing. And well, uh, subsequently, the next session, uh, he played uh, a new character and then he decided never to come back again. And I knew the reason why it was because his much vaunted magic user had died. And I was just like, Well, that's Ooh. a great point. You're making a couple of great points. First of all, Jason, to answer your, the original question, I, I don't mm-hmm. have a lot of conflict between the PCs and the games. Sometimes in my Monday night AD&D game, and this is mostly just because we're playing online, uh, there will be tension between the actual players because they feel like they're not being listened to and they're or they're not, you know, people are talking over them. And that's really just because we're online. If we were all sitting at a table, Vic, you're blessed that you're playing at a table and you, you get to go to the game center, which is a great place. Cause I was there when I was at Dave con last year, right. you, you can play in person. People tend to be a little more respectful in right. person, or at least they don't get quite as offended when the, you can see the momentum of people wanting to talk. Yeah. And, 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 well, and, you see, know, I, 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 you know, I got a rule with sort of like an iron fist so much too, is that I've got to sit there and I got to point when yeah. I get, when I'm doing my rounds, I start pointing and I go around the table. And yeah. Here we go. We're going to go well, around the table here. And, and, and Jason, he's in my Friday night game. He'll tell you, I try, and I think I do a pretty good job, too, of making mm-hmm. sure everyone stays engaged and that people aren't talking over each other. But on my Monday night game, we're up to six people, and we have a couple. It's mostly guys, and we have a, a, one great female player, Wendy, and she's the one who gets talked over a lot. And then her husband, Sean, gets mad at everybody, and then we get a lot of yelling. But it doesn't ever devolve into the game. Like, now I'm going to kill your character. Although so, uh there's a lot of joking about it so I, I do wonder if it ever will go in that direction and i feel like as the higher they get in level the more i'd be willing to allow like you say to allow a fight to spill out because i don't think it's realistic that this group of people who are always together in these high anxiety tension situations get along like best friends i mean it's just not i mean we all work in the real world here and it's just not realistic to always get along do you allow pranks because some, some of my players have played pranks on other players and uh, so I, I've, I've done that to release some tension and stuff I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is great see this is stuff i wish players yes i would definitely allow pranks uh, i i do and and we have a lot of times where we have gambling and they gamble against each other and there, there's sometimes there are some pranks so yeah i think that's anything to lie i i would love for me to sit there and listen to them role play for a while at times and try to develop this group. Like, what is this group really like? Like if we were all really in this world together, I'd like to hear what is this group talk? Like I've said it sometimes you're all, you said it, you like to do these hex crawls, right? I'm like, what do you guys talk about? Let's, let's do 10 minutes of you guys on the road. What do you talk about? But, and then they sit there, you know, it's crickets that no one said, do you have a drinking rule for at the, at the pub? 
because I have a drinking rule where you're at the pub and they're drinking. The longer they are, they have to roll a constitution score. And if they go above their constitution or they get, you know, because they yeah. add a plus to the die roll every every hour they're there. And if they go above their constitution, they are schnocker drunk. And then, then, then it's like, okay, we break, we grab them by the feet and arms, we bring them outside, we throw them in a horse trough. You know, it's really something like that. Yeah. It's, it's just we try to make, yeah, I try to make some funnies, and you know, it, it's just like. Oh, yes. But do you have to prompt the players to to do the practical jokes, or do they come up with that on their own? Oh, some of them do it completely on their own. And it's, that's great. And I, and so I that's love great. it because it's just like okay, and then, you know, their player comes walking back in with seaweed on her head. And <laughs> well, you see, Vic, this is great because you, I think, I can hear from the way you laugh about it a lot too. You play the game kind of like we're still teenagers. And I mm-hmm. do too. And I view these characters. You're generally playing very young people, right? Your care. Mm-hmm. No one rolls a character and says, "I'm 55. I got yes. knee problems. I got a bad back. My wife is not. You know, I don't like her so much, and my kids hate me." No mm-hmm. one rolls that character, right? Right. We're rolling young people. What do young right. people do? Throw the guy in the ditch. So, you know, <laughs> that's what they do. And when we were back in the 80s, so back in the day. So, Jason, I'm not even sure if the dynamic is because back then was better or we were, we were better back then. Mm. Um, we did that. We would do the jokes. We would have the inter-party fighting. We would get mad at each other. Well, my character, I'm going to hit him with my sword. And the DM, I'd be the DM, I'd be like, really? You're going to hit him with the sword? That's, you know, you're in the middle of a cave. There are trolls everywhere. Yeah, he just pissed me off. I'm hitting, and then you roll, okay. I find the characters, they don't, the players are like, well, if I hit him with the sword, we'll get caught. And I would never do that. Right. I'm like, well, yeah, and, I rolled, 50. <laughs> and if you right. guys remember, I don't know if you guys have got it or not, but I wrote bar brawl rules for uh in my uh in a CD for um Keeper Blood Red Falls. There's bar mm-hmm. brawl rules inside of that. And different bars, different atmospheres. You know, I mean there was there's the low bar bar with all the thieves and assassins and everybody else was there. And then there's a high bar place where all the paladins and, and the self-righteous, you know, snobs are yeah, there. The lords, the yeah. 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 <laughs> and, oh, leave your weapons at the door. We have guards and blah blah blah. The other one is like, oh no, everybody comes in here with a poison dagger. Otherwise they're not leaving. <laughs> And and so I bring out my bar brawl rules sometimes and I make the players roll on it. I was just like, okay, you find, and and I've got 40, I think there's 30 or 40 bars in there that I make them roll it. And all right, you're at the uh, Prancing Pony. It's it's a seedy little dive. Your odds of getting in a fight are X number of percent. This is a chart for it and everything else. Yeah. So I purposely did that because I wanted to bring more of real life reality. You know, the yeah. seedier the bar, the greater the chance there's something stupid and crazy is going to happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and I do use the alcohol rules. Uh, Jason, were you back in the game when we lost Argo, the cleric? Yes. Yeah. Why well, yeah, did we lose and... Argo the cleric? What happened to Argo the cleric? Yeah, because the characters have been drinking and they were out on a boat, and well, we, we had combat in the boat because we had the um. How, how do you pronounce it? Do you, I, <laughs> the, the sea, the sea gargoyle. I can't pronounce. Uh, Vic yeah, knows how to say it. You know the word oh, for God. the sea gargoyle. Anyway, that's these, these, these two saying. sea gargoyles came up on the on on the boat, and 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 he ended up falling off the side of the boat because he he was drunk and he lost his. He, what, I think he rolled a miss or he. he he failed some kind of role. Well, it was the sick. one, the, the, the evil. Oh, no, that's what it was. Yeah, that's the, right. Because we had an evil NPC with us. They had an evil the, NPC yeah, being played right. by one of the characters <laughs> that night. And he just aimed that wand of fear, even though yeah. the drunk cleric was, was in the way. And that's blasted right. Argo them. jumped off. Yeah, and Argo jumped off the boat. <laughs> Argo jumped off and he drowned because he was drunk. So I and, am. And he was you, wearing Vic. his metal armor on the boat. And, 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 there's, yeah. and there's another aspect of the game that, that, that the young don't get. Oh, I'm just gonna shoot my arrows into a melee or something like that. I was just like, no, that yeah. doesn't work like that. Um, my kid, my I had some guys in my game here on Sunday or Saturday. I was like, oh, I want to do this. I said, oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now because it's a because there's two characters fighting that one monster. You get a negative eight to hit. What? I said, <laughs> you can shoot, but it's a negative eight to hit that 
that monster. But, 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 but. no, no, this is yeah. my ruling. It's a negative. Eight. You have a chance of hitting another character. And one of my characters hit another character in the back of the back. And I, you know, I have these handy dandy uh, location die and it hit him right in the dead center of the back. And I was just like, it's like, you take one point of damage from a sling bullet coming from behind you, you know, and it distracted that character just for, you know, I was like, yeah. So I try to bring as much vividness inside the combat that I possibly can without dragging it down so much that it's, it's, you know, it's just horrible. And and let's also talk, since we're talking combat and melee, uh, all creatures aren't stupid. If they're losing a match, they're going to flee. And I I, I see a lot of DMs that say, okay, we're just going to keep battling and battling, battling until these creatures are dead. That ain't the way it works. Folks. Yeah, no, no. They're gonna they're gonna break off the attack. If, if they're winning, they're gonna keep at it. But if they're not winning, they're gonna break off the attack and get the hell out of there. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. So, or try to surrender under some kind of terms, or yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, and, and, and that's you're right. I think there's this video game mentality almost to the way some DMs run the game, just like the players have this video game mentality. I want to level up right in the middle of the of the cavern. Why not? I, you know, I, and why why don't the monsters just fight to the death? Now, my monsters, you got to play them smart, too. Uh, Jason, I'll tell you, how'd the boat, how'd the ship go for you and you guys and you won? Did, did you guys capture the ship? Oh, no, because they, yeah, so we, we had, and, you know, the, the, our, we had a druid and he decided he was going to warp wood on the panels of this we, we were out in the boat and there were the smugglers on a long you know boat coming alongside us. These are both, you know, little rowboats. And but anyway, the, the druid popped the the panels on the you know the planks on the rowboat they were in and, and so it sunk before we could get the stuff off the boat. You know, so we well, what about the ship though? When you guys finally invaded the main ship, did I have all the characters just standing around waiting to get attacked or oh no, of course not. No, no, yeah, they, they acted like they should have acted. I mean, well, the other thing, so the I, I think this is one area where so I, you know, I kind of prefer AD and D these days over the basic versions of the game, right? But this is one thing that the Mulve BX set does really well is the play example in Mulve's basic or Mulve Cook BX, but Mulve's basic has them parlaying when they enter a room with some monsters in there. You know, it's not automatic. We see a monster, we have to attack it. You, you, right. you know, they they open up with with trying to talk to them, which you know, if you're a low level party going through the dungeon. You know, you, you might have to fight, but you, you might live a little bit longer if you try to talk because you might be able to throw something, you know, give them some gold and get by them. Or if it's something else, you might be able to throw some food at it and get by it. Right. Well, that's well, the big, I, just, big I call that the, the paladin mentality. Oh, we're only for good and we're going to go in there and kill everything. It's like, ah, uh, you know, I, that's the way to play this. You know, I mean, I mean, I if you run, if somebody runs, I don't know if any. Well, I think. I think MW has a copy. Maybe Jason does. If my Keep of Blood Red Falls, the object of the module is a commando raid. And, and, and a lot of these players don't understand there's different types of modules that they're going through. And they've got to, they, they don't have the mentality to go, okay, the hints were inside the first couple paragraphs of what this, the, this dungeon master is giving us. And Let's, you know, this is a commando raid. We're going in here not to clean house, but we're looking for one individual. You know, we're looking for the Saddam Hussein of Keep at Blood Red Falls. Because if we cut off the head of the, the monster or the head of the snake, we're good. You know what I mean? But a lot of these, a lot of these dungeon masters, it, it seems like it's the railroading. It, it just seems like they're railroading the characters through. And all they got to do is just kill, 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 kill. And, and sweep the rooms afterwards. And I've had it where I've, when I'm playing my game and my, with my people, I have monsters backfilling, back, backfilling into rooms behind the group, which really, it's like, I, they get really frustrated. Well, we killed everybody in this room. Well, guess what? Monsters wander. It's just, it, it happens, you know? Yeah. And you don't know what's going to wander into that room, you know? It's just, mm-hmm. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good point too, because um, I think uh, so it, it really does 
depend on what modules you play. Some of the old modules, like I think B2, uh, Keep on the Borderlands, isn't necessarily one where you just go plowing in cave after cave, killing and killing. That's one where you, if you're not capable of what Jason just said, parlaying, retreating, throwing the sack of gold as you're running, you know, you're low level. And if you, you got to go and work your way through that very uh, carefully as players to survive it, that's why really, that's one of my favorite. I think it's a lot of people's favorite modules from TSR because, and I, I'm running the A series on Monday night uh, and that's very railroady. I mean, you are absolutely right. That's one that's a railroad, but the players of it, we've got an agreement. This is what we're going to do. We're going to run them. And the, the two of those, the two in the, uh, uh, well, the first one, high port, and then the second one, the uh, the stockade, the slaver stockade, it's exactly like your module. It's a, it's more like commando raiding than just going in and taking on everything. And if the players try to take on everything, they're not going to succeed in either of those modules. So I think you're right that that's a, adventures. You have to present them different types of adventures where they can be use different kinds of skills. Yeah, and I, I really want, you know, here's the, here's the thing, too, is that I want it to be an educational process. Uh, I want them to look at, play, when you're playing with me, I want them to think it through. Think it through and play. If they're just, if they run headlong into it, they're going to die. And I keep telling, you know, some of these guys that have, their characters are kept dying. And I keep telling them. You got to think it through. Watch the other players. Watch what they do. If they're not jumping into the combat, maybe it isn't time for you to jump in yet. Wait till, you know, the big hitters get in there and start wasting away. You know, if you see them, one of them fall, maybe then it's time if the monster is damaged enough that you can jump in and get the kill. You know, it's just, it's, it's, yeah. you know, it, it, it's, it's, and, and that's the thing too, is that, you know, if I educate my players enough, then I'm going to see them getting in these tournaments, the old school AD and D tournaments, and they're not going to walk in and be in, you know, be in Conan the Barbarian, just kill everything. They're actually going to sneak in there like an assassin, and 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 try to get through it as fast as possible. Here's the interesting thing about the tournament play, though, and how it, it is out of style. Like I don't think a lot of players, even if they're one E players, are used to the tournament style. And I got to admit, I didn't go to any when I was growing up. So I, I've experienced them for the first time. At, uh, did you run a tournament at your at DaveCon? I can't remember. Not last year. No. <laughs> right. So um, so GrogCon was my first experience with the tournament module. And I, I understood it probably. I, I don't know why I picked up on it, probably because I DM a lot of games. But this whole idea of the backstory you mentioned, too, these are two things. This That's something that conflicts with tournament play. So first of all, I had a player just like you had. Uh, he was in my original Monday night AD&D game. He's original member of it. And he had a paladin. And he had this huge backstory. And I said, come up with a little backstory because I'm just getting back into the game after years and years. I didn't know people were writing three page backstories. I meant when you're got a backstory i'm a farmer i picked up a sword and i became a fighter okay that's a great back that's a backstory right no no he had the whole thing he inherited his father's sword and he had all the well when his character got killed two months into the game and it was his fault he did the same thing he pouted uh he decided oh maybe i'll come back in then he came back in and he quit and it's all because he couldn't get over the fact that this beautiful character died now okay now, now, I both me and you have this problem, same problem. So what I do in my game is I roll where they're born in Greyhawk, what their social status is, uh, if their parents are married, it's all in the uh, under Earth Arcana, and I roll their skill before they become became a witch of call, and right. then I slowly use each of those characters. Um, stuff like like i find out if their dad was a merchant or something well i'll make use that later on say your dad's your dad the merchant has died word has just gotten to you four months after it happened you know a band of orcs over in this country has killed your dad and they ripped off the entire family your mother's destitute this message came to you so i create the storyline and right. then go off and do this stuff but i don't try i don't encourage backstories whatsoever beyond what i've given them because 
we're supposed to build a story together. You're That's supposed right. The to backstory. build a world together. So that yeah, it's, it's, exactly. You know. It, and well, Jason, you experienced it in my Greyhawk game too. I did the same thing. I rolled from where they're from and gave them a little bit, like, here's why you're in the tavern. Like I gave everybody a little bit of a description. Here's why you're in the tavern meeting together. This is it. That's the backstory. It doesn't matter what else happened. We don't care that your father was uh, lost his first girlfriend to the Black Knight and we're going to have revenge on that. We don't going to do that. They're not doing that in this game. Uh, so here's why backstories don't even, you can't even have a backstory in a tournament play. And because in the tournament at GrogCon, somebody kind of wanted to have a little bit of more detail in their care. It kind of <coughs> ended up costing our team a little bit because a lot of time was spent in the very beginning trying to flesh out who this character guy's character is going to worship. And then, <laughs> and then then talking a lot about the deity throughout the tournament like so we're trying to get through each of the sections of the tournament pretty efficiently but this one character just couldn't let go of this backstory idea and that he would always do something or say something for the deity and i'm like this is great for campaign mode this is wonderful but not for for tournament let's just no, and like and who cares and it's let's not built for tournament at all and and now I've won the Grogcon tournament two years in a row. I wasn't able to go this year. Yeah, you weren't there this year. Yeah. Um, and while I appreciate those type of players in my campaign, sometimes tournament mode, I follow the lead, man. I mean, yeah. I, I, but I, when I select my character, I'm always the last person to select a character in a tournament because I'm like, all right, y'all took the paladin, you took the this, you took the that, you took the, and you're leaving me with this. Okay, I'll play this character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter what character I'm playing because I know what the set objective is. That, that you've been told the set objective when the dungeon master wrote, you know, told it to us. We know the set objective, work for it. Don't sit there and do it's more it, it most tournaments are, and I feel they are a commando rate. You're looking for yes. the gold. And the big bad guy. That's that's what that's you're it, looking yeah. for. You're, Get in that's and the out. Only things you're Damsel looking for. Damsel getting tortured in room to the left. Yeah. Maybe not important. Maybe we let her get tortured. We know your backstory. You're the great hero, but we're uh -huh. not going to meet our objective if you waste time over here. <laughs> know, we're not going to waste a half an hour of time saving these slaves over here. Wow. We need to be three levels below where we're at to get to, to, get yeah. to the big bad yeah. guy or rescue whatever, you know, it's just like, yeah. And that became, go. <laughs> in that way, that's a good way. If you establish a tournament adventure, you put those like, I almost like little mm. Easter eggs, put those in there to see if you can capture, you can catch those types of players who feel like it's really important. Well, I am lawful good. I certainly can't walk by this little old lady getting mugged because I'm lawful good. Yeah, but we got to get all the way over there. <laughs> yeah, and that, well, the first drug con, that was when uh, Dan and James wrote it. And the thing is, and that one was that they had an entrance and it wasn't guarded. And I turned and I looked at my players and there was three of us or three, there was four of us total. I looked at them and I said, I am not going in an entrance that's not guarded. And they said, why? And I'm just, it's a trap. <laughs> it's so obvious. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't a trap. So, and just, so what are you going to do? And I said, well, I'm going to circle this whole building because I was an assassin. And I said, I'm going to circle the whole building. I'm going to look for an entrance. And I found one that was guarded lightly. And I said, that's where we're going in. And that's how we won because we actually came in where the big bad guy was. We killed the two guards and we dropped right in on top of the dragon. We killed the dragon and we found all the gold and all the money. We just sat there for the rest of the game. And that's all we did was we loaded yeah. all the money up and we killed like eight people while everybody else yeah. is coming through it and they just you know it's just like they never got to the point we were at because yeah. they, they they just got railroaded into this oh we're gonna just go through this and yeah like that. well yeah. that's the thing about tournament play you have to be a lot less you're not there to play with all the little gadgets you're you there they're there to trap you they're there to distract you and not in a way that like tomb of horrors it's they're not even there necessarily to kill you they're there to make sure you don't finish the module right well so it's, either, it's either you're going to get tpk'd 
or you're not going to finish one of the two because that's what they're aiming for that's what they're aiming for yeah and i tried to tell dan and james when they wrote that one there's you made it too easy you made the obvious too easy for an experienced player like myself because i'm going to be looking for those options you know but the thing is they probably they probably have to make it a little more obvious i think a lot of the modern players get it have to be spoon fed a little bit on how to do a tournament because uh (laughs) they will get they'll they'll sit there and they'll role play they will role play with an interesting character, James is making an interesting character. So let's keep role playing because we enjoy the voice. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, but we're wasting time. <laughs> yeah, it, it, well, when you have a set amount of time, is that's the thing? Is that I don't think it's emphasized enough to these players in a tournament that there's a set amount of time you have to achieve your objective by this amount of time. If you don't get this, tough yeah. luck. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and then. It's like forget the backs. I don't care what you're. You're the paladin. Who cares? Listen, you're the paladin. Who cares? Use, we're going to use your skills. We need your skills, but we don't need you. Uh, law and order everywhere. Who cares? Oh, Let's move on. Wow. I had uh, in the second tournament we had. We won it by. We got just got out of there within three minutes of the final buzzer of the thing. So we won, but. I had a player, he's like looking at a juggernaut and he says, well, I'm going to go ride the thing. And I just, I grab, I I said, as my character grabs him by the shoulder, grabs him by his collar of his neck and pulls him out of the hallway because I don't want him to get run over by this juggernaut. You know, it's like, it's like, no, because I was playing a magic user, 18 intelligence or something like that. And I was just like, I'm using my intelligence here to say this to you. If I was a barbarian or a fighter with like eight intelligence, I would have said, let him get run over. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, and and, think, and that's the thing. Uh, you know, you've got, and there's nothing wrong. There are a lot of people that go to tr- go to conventions because that's the only time they get to play in person, right? Because they don't have home groups or anything. And the non-tournament games are the places to do that. Role oh, play, right. get in the character, have that catchphrase. You, you know, do that. All, those non-tournament games are a place to explore those things and to enjoy that kind of play. But right. the tournament's a different thing that I, I think has been lost to, to some degree. And, you, you know, if, if you're not going to GrogCon, if you're not going to DaveCon, if you're not going to some of these old these old conventions or the old school conventions with tournaments, you, you're not really getting it. You, you know? Well, the one thing about the tournament is it emphasizes we play RPG games. So we're playing mm-hmm. role-playing games. So there's role-playing and there's the game part. The tournament leans very game. heavily to the G. You're mm-hmm. playing the G, the game. It's the game. Let's play the game. Let's figure it out and solve it. Whereas these other games can be more of the other. A lot of people love the RP. They love the role playing. But that's not really what the you, tournament's about. I got, a, I got a question for you guys. <laughs> Do you ever run into that player that only plays one type of character? absolutely absolutely i i uh, that is the i am so uh, how do i want to say this i am so um um dismayed by that type of player i had a player in my group here in town he played all i played was a halfling thief i was just like you don't even know how to play bilbo baggins man you <laughs> you're not a good bilbo baggins you'd be better off playing a fighter with you know, a fighter, you know, I, I'm trying to lead him down these other paths and say, just play a fighter, play half orc fighter, play something or other, but don't play that, that Bilbo Baggins character because it, 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 and inevitably Bilbo Baggins did something stupid and got killed every time, you know? It's just yeah, like, <laughs> it's, I find that a lot. In fact, the way I set up the game I ran at GrogCon, and maybe I'll run it at DaveCon, um, I had the players roll dice before they could pick their characters. That way, you, you, there was a chance you weren't going to get the one pre-made you wanted. It, it, I was just like, look, whoever rolls highest gets to pick their character first. And what, when, when we get to the last guy, you have, there's only going to be one character left. You're, that's what you're going to play. Right. Well, and, and, and when I get to Gary Con and stuff and I'm playing Keep a Butter Falls, I, I immediately, one of my tricks as a dungeon master is at a, at a convention is, I'll make 30 pre-gen characters. There might be eight people at the play, at the table. I'll throw all 30 characters out there and say, pick one. <laughs> so for 15 minutes, they're sitting there going, ah, and they're trying to interact. And that's what I want them to do to start the game is I want them to start 
talking to each other while they're picking out characters. And then maybe they'll form a cohesive enough group to get through it. But inevitably they all they pick the character they like i right. uh, i always yeah. play clerics i'm taking that cleric yeah or i'm taking this person or i'm taking that one and that they'll yeah. leave behind they'll leave behind certain types of characters and it's like well maybe that illusionist would be a good thing well let me you ask know, you this illusionist is always left behind a monk is always left and people behind. never want to play them they never right. want to play them yeah. well yeah. illusionist is tough because if you don't know the dm and you don't because the illusionist, how good an illusionist is, is very dependent. Well, one of the player and the DM, right? But because some DMs really nerf illusionists, yeah, so it really depends on the on the DM. So I, right. I can see people being hesitant if you if you don't know how how that DM is going going to play it. Well, well, let me ask you this, uh, both of you, this: Do you find um, when um, well, boy, did I just forget the point um, that? <laughs> <laughs> as a dm this is what i'm finding i find a lot of players now who have no experience at all ever running a game whereas when i played in the 80s with my smaller group we would definitely pass the i generally dm most of the time but other guys would be like hey i just got a new module from the bookstore i want to run it and we would all be like great but today I'm finding a lot of people are like, oh, I don't, I will not, I don't want to run a game. I'm oh, just I, a player. I have that. I have that all the time in mind. And the people just defer automatically to me. It's just like, nope, oh, Victor can run it. <laughs> and the only time I get to play basically is either online or at a convention. And when I'm at a convention, you know, I say, like, okay, here we go. And because I've dungeon mastered so much, I think a lot of dungeon masters themselves look at me and go, Oh boy, he's gonna he's gonna screw this module up, and that's what I did at Gary Con. The last one I went to is a, a, a guy thought he had this great module. I I nerfed that thing so bad it wasn't even funny. It was just like, I was like, well, I I, fi I finished that module in forty five minutes. He's, he's like he's like this is supposed to be a four hour module. Well, forty five minutes later we were done. And I said, do you got something else? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like I just you know because some you know it was a it was a railroad. Yeah, I knew it was well, a railroad, and I, I I knew how to get around it. Just right. The way it was well, well, my point of asking the question was the and, and Jason should jump in too. Is you, you um you're more comfortable? I think when you DM a lot, you don't care. That's what you just said. I don't care what character I get. I'll play it. Doesn't matter. And I'm mm -hmm. the same. I have the same exact right. attitude. I went to the tournament. I went to uh, Dave Con and Grog Con. I'll play anything. Whatever you got left, whatever. I'll play the Gnome Thief. It doesn't matter. I'll play whatever. Because mm -hmm. when I run games, I'm playing everything anyway, right? I'm mm -hmm. playing dragons, ogres, thieves. And and Jason, I think yeah. you know the same thing. When you run games, you have to know all the character types anyway. It doesn't matter. I'm just there to play. But exactly. I find these players, not only do they, they unwilling to DM, but they don't even really want to get out of like we were just saying. They don't want to get out of that character type either. Like I got a type of character. That's what I play. And I don't DM. I just play. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I think it's really healthy for everyone to try to DM once in a while. Even if Vic nerfs their module, <laughs> it's healthy to run games once in a while to get yourselves out of that comfort zone. Yeah, I'm lucky enough that right now, because we mainly play online and because the communities I move in, I'm playing a lot of different styles of games, a lot of different games, but pretty much everybody I play with are also GMs or DMs. So it, it, it's a mixture. I, there, there's not, there, there might be one or two people I play with that mainly are players. There, there's one I'm thinking of, but they used to DM a lot back in the day. And for right now, because of the time frame, they just hop into games so they can, right? Yeah. But for the most part, I'm playing all with DMs. And we kind of rotate who's running the game or this, this and that. So, so it actually works out really well. Um, but well, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You, you have to get you out of your comfort zone. Run yeah. a game, run different, and, and, and don't run just monsters. Put some mm -hmm. PC types in there. Make a lot of NPC types. Have the town. Have the bar. Run different kinds of care. Get used to it because then when you're playing, you'll maybe you'll say, you know what? I really enjoyed playing that cleric as the NPC in my game. Uh, I'm not going to play a fighter this time. I'm going to. I'm going to play a cleric because now I, I know what it's like. I've run some of the spells and hopefully when you get a guy like Vic in your game, he, he maybe nerfs your module, but he doesn't make you like lower your self-esteem as a DM. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do that because by the end, I'm just like, okay, 
uh, I pulled my shenanigans in the module and sometimes I'll, I'll even hold back because I know what's going to happen. You know, yeah. sometimes, sometimes these modules, these guys write are just like, oh, I've seen this one before. You know, I, I yeah. know exactly what's going to happen with this. And uh, I'll just sit back and I'll just keep my mouth shut because I know that, you know, it, I'm not meta gaming it, but I just know what's going to happen. And I just have to sit there and shut my mouth and, and let everybody enjoy it. But, you know, at, at some point where I'm seeing the party doing something stupid, I, I you know, I just can't hold my tongue anymore. <laughs> I'm like, oh, right. I got I to gotta fix this right now. They're all going to die. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, let's go back. Let's go back here. Now we can go back to this evil part of it too. Is that you know, not all, not all. Let's see. How do I want to say this? Not all modules are evil, and there's some that are that are like. Um, uh, you guys are familiar with Greyhawk. The the theocracy of pale is is a good. It's supposed to be a good place, but it has some bad intentions because the, the selfishness is almost borders on that evil stuff. And I've used that to get my players to work for, you know, the ruler of the theocracy of pale, the bishop or whatever his name is. And I just, and my players regretted it the whole time, <laughs> but there's, there's, there's things you could do like as a DM and you're, 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 I mean, good can be evil and evil mm -hmm. can be good. And, and players don't understand that. I mean, I mean, an evil player can, can do good deeds just in his heart as hearts he's evil you know or that good player is good but that but he did an evil deed to bring about more good you yeah. know it's, it's yeah. just, they don't the, the players don't understand that whole dynamic you know what i mean so and i i try to bring that to them so that they learn that, that, that but you're not you know. getting squishy on the orcs are still always evil though oh, correct yeah. uh, <laughs> all right we're not you're not suggesting <laughs> you're not suggesting the orcs sometimes are good <laughs> well no well the, the, the orcs might do a good deed they might yeah. the orcs might say hey i'm gonna attack this other tribe of orcs and kill them well that's a good deed to you you know and, mm -hmm. hey i was gonna go kill them but if that uh, evil tribe wants to go do it because i bribed them and i've done that before i've taken a sack of gold and walked into an orc you know parlayed with an orc chief and i said here here's ten thousand gold go kill that orc tribe well, hey they wanted the money they did the hey, job that, for me <laughs> that goes back to our discussion of just being plain old selfish right it, yeah. you you can bribe you can bribe good characters to go sack the, the town next door if you give them enough gold right, right. that doesn't mean they're evil <laughs> right i mean as long as they believe the lies you told i mean the, i mean i've told my players when they're around the table i've told them a lie and then they find out that that lie from that whoever gave them that lie was actually a lie you know they thought it was the truth and then they went and sacked the town or something and it's like these people weren't evil that's another <laughs> fun thing i find with the young younger player versus the older players they don't like the lying they don't like when you're you're the dm and you're lying right to their face and they find out later and it's like but you but you said it's like yeah i lied my that character lied to you. And then the, even the best part is we have a guy in, in the, my Friday night game who there's another player who lies all the time. He's always embellishing himself. I am this the great. I am this the all powerful. And the character, who's the same one who doesn't like when the NPCs lie to him, he's always like, no, he's not. No, he's not. He's not. He didn't do that. He, he lied. <laughs> he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> and we all laugh about it and i'm just kind of like man you are just you're so young you just think every, you know you've been taught well you have a great father because you don't lie you never lie but in right. the real world this is a game no, though. They, they gotta forget see that's the thing is yeah. they gotta and, and that's the thing about conventions and everything else is that you need to separate yourself you're walking into a game convention you're sitting at jason's table let's say and Jason's reading you a story, you need to forget everything on the outside and concentrate on what Jason's saying or MW is saying, because this is what they're doing. And if Jason's lying to me and I'm looking at him, and I'm a player, I'm going to say, uh, can I go ask somebody else in town? You know, it's going to take a little bit of my pocket change and go ask somebody else in town to see if he's feeding me full of crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
you know, but even then, I might even go with the story. I might just say, okay, I know Jason's, I know Jason's character is feeding me full of line of crap, but I'm going to keep going along with this until I yeah. figure out what the end goal of this thing is. Right. And Jason's character that's giving me the lie, he might die at the end of my sword because I'm like, I'm like, hey, you lied to me, and now I'm going to take care of you too. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, and the other thing is accepting if you have a character in your group, you should you shouldn't always be ratting them out. Let them embell. All right, you know what's his name's character? He's a liar. He's an embellisher. But it's not my job to rat him out all the time. Because that, well, and, and I think Jason will agree with that. It's mm-hmm. just like sometimes I'll just sit back, like I said, in the tournament or whatever, and I'll or at a convention, I'll just just sit back. And I know it's a lie. I know it's a complete lie. It's a fabrication. That, that's that's. I mean, we are floating in a river of s h i t. I know it's a lie. Everything else, and I'll just let him keep going. I just yeah. let it. It just, it just, you know what? You, you, you lie enough, and you're gonna die just that much faster. But you know, I mean, I might not care about that. That's right. Let them, let them dig their own grave. Or yep. why, why would the paladin not uh, rat them out? Because you know what? The paladin's job's not to be the truth monitor right. of everybody. You know, yeah. This guy, I travel with this guy. He's the worst liar. But you know. He helps me achieve my goals for right now. So I just let, you know, let right. him do his Until thing. he does something personally to the paladin. That's right. Why would the paladin care? You know what right. I mean? He never I, defiles my deity. He never, you know, he never besmirches me, he never steals from the group. And as long as the paladin doesn't say these detect evil, his best friend might be an assassin who's posing as a fighter or a cleric of a good, of a good alignment and get away with it for, I mean, months yeah. at a time. And then finally, it it comes to blows. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, it was evil. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Well, well, and that's the thing. If that assassin say lawful evil, then they very well might see eye to eye on a number of things. Honestly, Mm -hmm. because of the lawful aspect. Yeah, they have that code. They they have that code they follow. You you know, they they both expect a certain amount of order. Actually, they appreciate the order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you, you know, in the end, we may in the end, we may have to kill each other. But for right now. Right. And, and, but together. that assassin, right. remember that assassin, too, the higher level he is, the mm. better at lying and disguise, disguise. And everything else he is. Right. You know, right. he's, he's able to sit there and and play that to the hilt. He'll be able to play that whole that whole character to the hilt. And until that paladin says, detect evil or a magic user says detect evil or whatever you know I yeah. mean, that's when it finally is revealed that this person has been lying to your face the entire time and, uh, you know then it's either a it comes to blows b the paladin's got to let him go because of certain deeds he did before or c the assassin decides eh, i'm out of here and he, and he just disappears you know well and then, this is this kind of loops back to what I was saying. Like we were, I think we were used to it more from the literature and even the media back then. I mean, I forgot to even mention like the A team. Like if you mm-hmm. watched the A team, you had that group, right? And you had like different kinds of aligned character types in that small group that mm-hmm. needed each. They needed each other. They couldn't accomplish their missions without each other. You needed Mr. T. You needed Face, who was more mm-hmm. your sly, not necessarily honest, you know, charming. Right. You needed everybody. You needed uh, so uh, I I don't know what they're watching these days, or I don't know what it is, but the, oh, I know I, I, it, it was like a little miniature D and D game, and they're doing their they're doing their, everybody's doing their thing. You know, what I mean, it's sort of and and that's the thing is that you're making a cohesive group. It doesn't have to be everybody in that group does not have to be everybody doesn't have to be good. Everybody doesn't have to yeah. be neutral. Everybody doesn't have to be evil. They could be they could be a small wide breath. And this is why I come back to the point that I don't want to know your alignment. Yeah, I really don't. As yeah. a dungeon master, I don't know. I do know what it is because I know what everybody's character is. Yeah. But I really don't need to know what it is. Like the way you play is what you're saying. You don't want right. it always coming out. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, if you're in the class <laughs> and you're lying through your teeth, you're lying through your mm-hmm. teeth. And I know it. You know it. But nobody else at the party knows it. Yeah. And that's just fine. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> you know, it's also, I think, the world we're in now is getting a little less tolerant. There, and I'm not saying for good or bad. I'm not trying to judge it's just the world is different. people want 
to be around like uh, I, I don't the people don't want to talk with other people who maybe have dissenting views and maybe this is seeping into the game in a way I don't know who knows yes politics I think I think politics is playing a big part into into games now people are bringing this stuff in and that's why I say leave your politics at the door I mean you're playing a character in a fictional world I don't want to hear about your presidential election, your congressional, whatever. I just leave it behind yeah. because this yeah. is make believe. You're supposed to escape reality in this game. This is, you know, you're you're here. You're supposed to be having fun with your friends and everything else. It just doesn't need to be here. Well, do you and, think that's another thing that's changed, Vic? Is I don't read into the old game what's been read into it in the modern times. I don't know where that comes from. I just read rules and monsters and scenarios oh, and yeah. my I, mind is not making links to 15th century slavery uh you know capitalism or whatever i don't i don't see any I, of that i see a game you know what i see i see 15th century that's what i see i see a game yeah. of 14 15 13 to whatever century we're way back then <laughs> this is where yeah. we're at politics isn't playing a game the only people that play politics back then were the kings and queens and you know what i mean with yeah, these functionaries yeah. where they're playing the games the people right. they didn't have a choice of what happened they, they just had to go with the flow you know what i'm saying yeah it was like all right king alfred's dead long live queen blah 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 you know what I'm yeah well that's <laughs> it's why just, it's almost even a little further back in time you're really the game is probably more like 12th century or 13th century because the average person would, might not even know who their ruler really is. They know right. who their local lord is. Right. They don't know who's on the throne. They don't know. I don't yeah. know. Well, and, and it's a, yeah, and, and it's a mix, too, because you look at D&D, and it depends. But the way it's a lot of it's played, you know, it's not historical at all. Right? No. But, no. And, it, and it, obviously, it's a game. And it's a fantasy game. But, <laughs> but a lot of people play it like fantasy old west, right? Midi you know, your, your medieval trappings. But but, it, but it's effectively old west where the PCs are, you know, the adventurers come into town and they kind of do what they want and they're, you know, walking around strapped and smart mouthing to the king and doing this and doing that and where you, you know obviously and you, you know pretty much any society that that's not really going to happen. No, you, you, you know, but it's a game. It's it's, it's, it's kind of Gonzo yeah. too. It's like it's, you look at the yeah. sailing vessels are a little more probably a little more modern in the game than mm -hmm. maybe like some of the weaponry you know right. it, so yeah, it's it's, it, yeah. it's a big mix it's it's a mix. We, which is fine and another thing is, yeah. is and we'll, let's go back just a second here to what jason said is that you're coming into town mm -hmm. there's a tax oh look at all that coin it isn't my coin uh we're right. gonna tax that coin uh we're gonna do this and I've got players arrested. If there's a bar fight, I've had the city guard come in there and clean them all up and throw them all in jail. <laughs> and then yeah. they get out and they're like, where's this? Where's that? Well, you know what? There's graphic corruption. Back then there was graphic corruption all over the place. And some of your stuff got swiped or it was taken yeah. or it was, you know, it was a tax. You know what I mean? So was, you need to, as players, you need to understand and go back into that mode and that thinking and leave the, your, well, that's not right. That's, yeah. Well, guess what? Back then it was right and it didn't matter. That's what, that's where we're at. Don't bring right. your modern senses of, of, of righteousness to now. You know what I'm well, saying? Or even your modern well, sense of safety and security and order. We live in one of the most orderly <laughs> times of humanity's existence. And you even just go back to Roman time, which was really a highly advanced civilization. Mm -hmm. And the amount of you would never walk out of your house at night in the city of Rome, even though it was the greatest city on earth. You'd get killed. Mm -hmm. You just wouldn't do it. If you did, you had guards. You had well, hired men. Yeah. 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 It's but but that's something maybe and with a convention, it's not I, I don't think as big a problem. But that's when, when you have people join your groups. It's just, and you'll see, but if they're newer, you, you know, that's might maybe something you just have to kind of explain to them. And, but, but again, it's one of those things, follow the lead of the, the player, the experienced players, and, mm -hmm. and you're going to be okay. Yeah. So, well, and see, and see part of that is too, yeah. is when I have my big groups and I get new players, I'm like, oh, first time player, <laughs> you're going in between genie and roy because they've been in mm -hmm. you know I, I separate those two and it's, no, you sit right there because i know if you have questions it's not going to be directed towards me roy or genie are going to help you 
yeah navigate these waters a little bit because sometimes my waters get really rough and tumble and they'll say no back your character up go away <laughs> and when you, you do that survive, um, you know? when you do that stuff Vic, like this world exposure stuff do you you don't overplay it it's not happening all the time right no. it's just the it's it's things you do they're little touches like i like to add to my game oh mm-hmm. the tax man showed up everyone's got to pay the tax but you know what it's it's not we're not going to do it every session because mm-hmm. people get tired of that and but it, it I think it is nice to add those things or or your stuff you put your stuff in a warehouse you left it there for months well it's not there anymore the city took it whatever so, right well yeah. and and there, that's another thing is that there were no banks back then I mean I keep telling you the bank was the rock uh, thirty pieces from the big oak tree to the left you know <laughs> yeah. No underneath, underneath underneath this rock that had two other rocks to sit next to it pointing at another rock and i mean that was your bank you know yeah <laughs> well yeah. or your bank was what what you bought so that's that's where jewelry is important or that's where you know getting that estate and hiring people to guard your estate well that's where the gone. henchmen that, that's, the hiring yeah, that, yeah. You, and then well I, and even then i've rolled to see if they're good or evil that they've mm-hmm. they've hired and then suddenly they come back and i was like where's all my stuff well, the captain of your guard was actually evil. He stole everything. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, he ripped you off. You know, he didn't pay the guards. He didn't pay the servants. He didn't do all this stuff. Right. Or, you, or you hired the guy like 60 adventures ago and you've never returned. You know right. what? They thought you were dead. Yeah. <laughs> I've done that one. It's just uh, you should see the players just go. I know they hate it. They hate it. Well, well that's so. If you had the problem, so so here's the final question. I I know because we're we, we need. I I want to be precious to everybody's time, and, and we've going a little bit here, but um, we we can have you guys back on do do round two at some point, but um. Let, let me ask you this, because I know this is an issue with, with some players. I'm sure it was back in the day as well as today. Do, do you find your players in your games have a problem surrendering or players that aren't willing to, when, when the city guard shows up, says, hey, you have to hand your weapons over. Well, I'm not going to let go of my weapon. I'm not going to give it over. A, a, have you guys ex- experienced players like that that, that, have, that that have tried to pull those things? Oh yeah, especially especially the higher level ones. They're like, oh, I would never do such a thing. Ah, oh, you know, they're so self righteous about stuff. But it's just like it's like, and I'm not gonna hand over my plus three uh, dragon slayer sword to some peon here or whatever. <laughs> they, 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 they just and they, they get all affronted and stuff. How do we know our weapons are gonna stay? Somebody should stay out here and guard these things. And I'm just like, I'm like, okay, I, I just I just play along, and and then sometimes I'll be evil about it sometimes they'll be good about it and you know it just it just it's 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 it just just depends like i said i just what what bar they're going to or what city they're going to or what you know it's just it's just i gotta put something together here and then you know it aggravates the crap out of them too especially the higher level characters that you know what i gotta leave my spell book here and my wands and my staff (laughs) or you or you wouldn't show up at this banquet in armor you're not allowed to wear your full armor you're going right to the lord's mansion or whatever they don't speaking of uh, speaking of that my characters are saying oh i sleep in my armor yeah what do you have for armor no 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 no. so i've taught my characters buy leather armor so they all sleep Sleep, their leather sleep armor. leather armor yeah. <laughs> yeah so but to answer to jason's question yeah i find players like the, the the obviously giving up the weapons yeah they don't like that they also they're the surrendering i find characters almost would rather just fight to the death mm-hmm. and surrender and then they get mad when their character dies and so what they're really mad at is they don't like being put in a position where they have to die where they feel like they have to die because mm-hmm. characters never have to die they can always turn and run they can always surrender but um the characters don't want they want to honestly they really just want to win every encounter that's what i find the problem is i i I don't know if you guys have ever heard the story it's a quick one now uh my character group was in the vespa forest and i make my characters roll where they're at right roll the monsters that they're encountering i I tell them when it's happening then they got to make a roll my characters roll they roll the leprechaun okay fine Go to the next person, say, roll a percentage die. He rolled like a zero two. Well, guess what? That's a leprechaun village. 
rolled. I got a 19 out of 20. For, <laughs> there's 19 leprechauns. You're sleeping in a leprechaun village. They're trying to rip you off and they stole something from you. So one of the characters accidentally killed one of the leprechauns. Well, guess what happens? Oh, boy, well, now, right. I, I ripped them <laughs> off. I, they walked out with nothing but stone flint spears and loincloths. And they had just purchased like a quarter million gold pieces worth of stuff in Greyhawk. And they were pissed. I was just like, yes, I did it again. You know, they're not dead. But God dang it, I taught them a lesson. You know what I mean? Yeah, and <laughs> they just the said, smallest don't... little creature. You might want to run from them yeah. or leave them alone. You know what I'm Just saying? Leave them alone. Yeah, the players don't want to lose scenarios. They they feel like they need to come out on top all the time. Well, yeah, <laughs> or the, the game sucks. Right, mm-hmm. which when you think about the literature, you read the appendix and you watch almost any movie series, anything the from James Bond to Conan to you name it, you know, player or the the pc or pc the protagonists of these stories almost always get captured getting captured and having to escape is a standard thing in literature and the films and in all the stories that we're basing our games on but everybody's scared to they they don't do it in the games and and most of us if you're captured we're not going to kill we're not going to kill your character you're not going to say okay now you're dead because it's more fun to have you try to escape from you, you know, yeah, you might be out in the chain gang, but now, you you know, your characters are going to have chances to escape because it's fun mm-hmm. for us. It, it's interesting for the DM, too. It's it's not interesting for the DM just to have you die and have to re-roll things. Right. Well, and it, remember the last James Bond. Right? Yeah. But remember the last James Bond movie. What happened? The, wow. the, 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 the hero died, you know. It's just, yeah. it's just it happens. But it also, I play the D&D rule where, you know, after eighth level they started getting all these henchmen and everything else and i was like oh you're in the semi-retirement now you can take that character and shelve them and start a first level character yeah what? start the first level character right yeah <laughs> and they're just like just like they, they look at me like i but 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 i just got to this point i'm like well you're in semi-retirement now because you've got to start a church or you got to do this you got to do that you got to do this and just, mm-hmm. they're just like ah it, it, it just makes them so mad and it's just like well this is what gary gygax made in the rule book yeah yes we're playing by the rule book well you know what that actually in a way reinforces using those level titles because it's you know you're not a fighter anymore you're the lord at some point you're called lord you're not called Mm -hmm. or whatever it is the high level you know well you've got those responsibilities (laughs) to like getting up in rank you know if if you're the chief of police you're not walking the city beat every day you know, you, right. might, you might wish you're walking the city beat instead of being all those meetings with the mayor. Right. And now you're it, playing you know. politics. Yeah, now right. you're playing politics. All right. Right. I got a, one question yeah. for both of you guys. Amulet of, uh, let's see here, proof of against detection and location. Would you rule that you could be detected as evil or good, or does it does, does it mask your does it mask your alignment completely? So are you asking if, if you're evil, would it, would the people trying to detect think you're the opposite or would no, it, no, mask just, it, completely? it just mask it completely? No, mask it completely. You just come up as a neutral. You know what I mean? It's just sort of, oh, I'm going to run. I'm going to run this. I'm going to put, you have that. Let's say you're an evil assassin. You have an amulet of protection against detection and location or whatever. If a magic user or a paladin or somebody runs a detect evil spell on you with that amulet on you, what would they read? Would they find your evil, or would they be neutral, or good no? I or whatever? would say it would. Ma- I would say it would mask. It would say mask with Jason. I I would have to look it up. I haven't run D. I honestly haven't run D and D for a long time. I don't remember that item. But depending how the how it's worded, whether you can't read anything or you can, or it would, they just couldn't tell. The, the problem is once you tell somebody, oh, you can't tell, they're going to automatically they think, assume. They assume. Yeah, right. they're going to jump to it. Well, that's the see, see, I do everything <laughs> is green, red, and neutral gray. And, and okay. so when, that when my characters are asking, I just say, oh, well, you get a neutral gray off of that person. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's just, you don't know. You're indeterminate of what the what the alignment is of this creature. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It, just, it says no aura is discernible on the wearer. On the wearer, and predictions cannot be made regarding him or her unless some powerful being is consulted. The wearer cannot be detected through clairvoyance. Da, 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 da. Okay. Then, yeah. Then, so, so I, I, w- I would 
I, I see the yeah I it that's tough because the way it reads is you can't basically you, you don't get a reading or you don't get a read yeah that's how yeah, I would almost do the it pro, the problem is players are going to then jump to the conclusion well that means they're well then it's time for the the evil character like the assassin to play his role even yeah, you know, so even better you know? it's like, oh, I'm not clear of 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 Saint Cuthbert you know. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you can't detect. Yeah, yeah your, right. your why your powers are fading when it comes yeah. to me. Yeah. Well, well, that's what we did right. in that's you what know? we did in your game, right? When I when when I flubbed the sleep spell, and you you, you know, and then you, so my character cast a sleep spell, and it, and I, I forget what happened that it didn't, you know, I, I it didn't really work. And, yeah. and, and then I played it off. Well, they must be much more powerful. Yeah. They must be much higher levels. We we need to be careful because obviously my sleep spell didn't affect them. Right. Well, I had a, I had a character in this last game and he was like, I say this spell and I say it doesn't work. I just said it doesn't work. Well, then I grabbed my sword and I, I said, No, 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 no. You did your reaction. You said your sleep spell, right. mark it off your sheet for the day. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's like seriously, I said. Yes, <laughs> you said it. I'm not playing around. That's with why it. we declare actions, right? Yeah. You declare that spell was your action. This, this and I don't, I don't, I don't, deter, I don't ask them to declare action. I just put it around the table and just say, "What do you do? What do you do? What do you do?" And I just, and whatever the first thing that comes out of their mouth, that's what you did. Oh, yeah, no, I make them to declare the action because I feel I, I don't like when players game it. Um, you yeah, know, all the actions are supposed to be starting simultaneous, but I think when you're in person, the, the way you're playing, Vic, yeah. I like the going around the table because you have you have a lot of new people every time, don't you? Well, I've probably got eight of them that are regulars and the rest oh, okay. you know, come in and go, you know, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. with a big group, with, with the a big, big group, group. I, I like that better. I like yeah. that better yeah. though. With the big, you're eight, you say about eight people, you might have 10 people there. You got to just go around the table mm -hmm. six or less. You got to declare actions first. Cause two, you got too many metagamers in the world, too many, too experienced players mm -hmm. who will change their action right before they get to you because they heard what happened. No, now I'm not going to waste that spell. <laughs> Well, and I also I also go, okay, your spell goes off after the monsters do their thing. So that's like, oh what? Yeah, yeah. well, it's just a five segments and you roll the six and I roll the four. So you start your action at six. Yeah. It's five segments. So your action actually happens after my monsters attack. So yeah. <laughs> that's something I don't know if, if, if it's part of the modern game, actually. Jason, you play 5e. I don't know if that's part I, I, of no, it. I no, I don't actually. Yeah. You you played more 5e than I have. I, I probably might play more 5e. I can't remember. I played one. Well, I, yeah. I can I tell you, sure you played five e more than I have because I've never played it myself. I played it at DaveCon. That's the only time I played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you got a hundred percent more experience than both me and Jason. Yeah. Welcome, and I, master of five E. <laughs> yeah, I'm the master, and uh, I'm not running it. I'll tell you that I'm not going to run it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I'm five E. Whatever. I've played a couple games online, but I, you know, don't own the books. I haven't really read it. But five E is is perfectly fine. But it's not the game I'm interested in, to be honest. That's how it's, I say it, Jason. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I like I got it. Nothing uh, against it. I have not nothing negative to say about it. I put it like this. Mm -hmm. I like to ski. I like to ski. My kids like to snowboard. They always ask me to snowboard. And I just say, I like to ski. That's it. Nothing wrong with snowboarding. I like to ski. <laughs> well, yeah. that's, some, that's sort of like your choice of cars. I mean, yeah. somebody says, why don't you buy a Chevy? No, nah, I've been a Ford guy all my life. I'm just going to stick with the brand I know. I know what's, uh, you know, if something goes wrong with it. I know what's there. I know what I got to fix. You know, yeah. it's, just, it's yeah. just one of those things, you know. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. And, and well, we'll get you back on. We'll do, we'll do a round two at some point. Well, this maybe is get fun. You on to talk we just need to add another stuff. person on here to help out and yeah. beat each other up. So, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll do really. that. We'll, we'll get maybe we'll get Carl Rodriguez on here next time. I was hoping to get him on this time. It didn't work out scheduling wise. Well, That's maybe right. he's, he's been playing. Uh, yeah, Carl's been playing since the '80s too, or, or maybe even the late '70s. I'm not sure. He's we been can playing probably since get 70s. somebody like Sonny on. Sonny's a dungeon master too. Yeah. He's got his own world growing too. So. Actually, that's a good point. I'll reach out to Sonny because I'd love to get Sonny on. But yeah, did but, we help you yeah. out? Jay? Did we? Did we do what you wanted? 
Jason? Is this, is this um, what you want to talk I, about? I think we just we, we we just did some stories back and forth, maybe a little bit, but that's fine. Uh, people right. like I think, I, think, and, I, 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 think I think we, we covered the whole breadth it. of evil, yeah, we running did. evil characters yeah. and stuff. It just it just was extended for ninety or so minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we would just fine. Her. Yeah, that's fine. You know, no, I think this was a lot of fun. Thank you guys for coming <laughs> on, and, and we'll definitely do it again. We'll you know add a couple other faces in the mix. All right. All right. Awesome. And Vic, when I get fully recovered, I'll, I'll book you. The gnomes are waiting. The gnomes are waiting to get oh, you on. All right. There we go. <laughs> all right. So, sounds so good. But before we close off, I'm going to let you guys plug anything you want to plug, MW. Since I introduced you second, I'll let you plug oh, your I'll just first. plug uh, my podcast. Check out the worlds of MW Lewis. It's a bunch of it's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, most of it's completely unserious. But I take it seriously, so I, I hope you listen and enjoy it. <laughs> okay. And and Vic, what what do you want? To uh, one thing I can plug is uh, DaveCon, DaveCon.net. Uh, listen to the Nerd Variety Cast uh, on there in the show notes. You should see a uh, link for free tickets to DaveCon. Go up there, fill it out. Simple survey, five questions, and you can possibly win tickets to DaveCon 2023. Or if you can't come in 23, I can give you, I will hold over those tickets to 2024. But Ooh, it's DaveCon.net nice. and the NERB Variety Cast, and he will have a show notes in something in the show notes. Exactly. Yep. It'll all links to all this stuff will be in the show notes. Thank you so much. And folks, we'll if if anybody has any questions, comments about this episode, the ways to Leave those comments. We're all in the show notes as well. There's a SpeakPipe account. There's an email address you can send it to. You can go to the Anchor webpage, leave a message there. And if I get any questions or comments for these gentlemen, I will get with them and we'll get you, you know, we'll get their answers to your comments and questions and we'll play it back on the air in a future episode. So take care, folks. Be excellent to each other. You, you stay, over, stay, stay over there. I might croak, man. You don't. You don't tell me not to croak. It's not. You can't tell people not to croak. I mean, it's. It could happen any time. You know, you play D and D. Could happen any time.